Okay. All right, so uh, good afternoon. Ooh, ooh, crushed. Let's try that again. Good afternoon. This side of the room, you talking? Good afternoon, okay. Okay, I could have stayed at home. They know how to order me at home already, so. Uh, so my name is Tom Reardon. I'm a um, former math teacher at Fitch High School. Are you familiar with where Fitch High School is or heard of Fitch High School? Okay, it's about 45 minutes from here, I guess. Um, and we're going to be talking about Climate Reality Project, uh, and I'll come back to this in a minute. But it could be considered a political issue. This is not, should not be considered one. Uh, so we're looking at this as a math modeling activity and, and interpretation. And also that uh, the file ideas shares this talk in mine and do not represent any company. So, um, like I said, 35 years at Fitch High School, uh, 39 years now at Youngstown State University part-time. Um, and right now, for the last 11 years, I've been working as a senior math advisor full-time for Texas Instruments. So I think you use our calculators, right? Okay. So that <coughs> has nothing to do with TI, even though I may be using their products. <coughs> so let me go back here. So I've been interested in climate change, climate reality, whatever you want to call it, uh, for, for many, many years. Uh, anybody familiar with um, former Vice President Al Gore? Anybody ever heard of former Vice President Al Gore? Only a couple of you have heard of him? Okay. Um, but he's been involved with climate change and things like that for like 40 years. And since he's gotten out of the government, he's um, been, he's, in fact, he's made a couple of movies about climate change. One of them got, I think, him an Oscar. Uh, some, some, some good things, he's been good, good things. And about three times a year he has a seminar uh, all around the world uh, for three days. And he had one in like Korea, he had one, another, and had one in Los Angeles. So I applied to go, and it doesn't cost any money to go to the to seminar, but it costs a lot of money to get your plane ticket and all that other good stuff, okay, while you're there. So I gave up three days, or actually five days, travel days, to go, go there and um, wanted to learn about climate reality, what, what's really going on here, okay? So um, when I went there, I thought there would be like 200 people. Turned out there were 2,300 people there at, at this. And this is where I sat, way back here in the back, okay? And this is as close as I got to the former vice president, okay? He was a big, on the screen, I never really got to get very close to him. However, I did get to meet a celebrity who, unfortunately, you probably don't know. Uh, this is, um, Ed Begley Jr., who's been an environmentalist for probably 50 years now, and uh, he wanted his picture taken with me. I'm not sure why, but or maybe it was the other way around. I forget. I get those mixed up. But anyway, I got to meet him. So this is the start of um, Mr. Gore's slideshow. He has over a thousand slides about climate that he shared with us over three days. You're not seeing a thousand slides, okay? Um, anybody know what this is? This is the Earth, right? This is the Earth, right here. And it's referred to as the blue marble. It's one of the first pictures we've ever seen of the Earth. Uh, it was taken at Apollo 11 in 1969 when I was a senior in high school. Um, and it kind of shows us what we're trying to protect here, okay? This is another favorite picture of mine. Um, this is either sunrise or sunset, I'm not sure which. Uh, but anybody know what this is showing here? What's that? The horizon. The horizon, but even more so, something else. Yeah, it is the horizon, it's a curvature of the Earth. Actually, it's showing atmosphere, over, okay, atmosphere. How thin the layer of atmosphere is. And the issue is with global warming is the ozone layer is doing what with the heat? Keeping it in, okay? And it's getting thicker and thicker, so we, not as much heat is escaping, and things are getting warmer. That's, that's the theory by 97% of the scientists in the world, okay? Um, and these are the... Uh, it says we're now spewing 110 million tons of man-made global warming pollution into the thin shell of our atmosphere every 24 hours. Now, to me, 110 is kind of a big number. 110 million tons, can you picture that? 110 million tons. And how often is that happening? Every day. Every day, okay, from this stuff, okay? And these are the other things that are contributing to uh, greenhouse gases which mess up the ozone layer. <coughs> Some of them are very necessary. I think we're going to need like al agriculture, right? I think that's going to be kind of something we need, right? But we might have to do things a little bit differently in, in, in most or if not all of those places right there. So the largest source of global warming pollution is the burning of fossil fuels and when does that happen? Cars, Cars planes, trucks, all those things, right? Gasoline, right? That's the biggest issue. 
So that you should find that uh, page that you have there. You should have one here. Um, it looks like that. It's, I think it's two pages stapled together. All right. And I, I want you to work together in pairs or triples or whatever you're working in. Talk to each other, okay, about this. Um, and just talk about what it says on the x-axis, on the y-axis, and how would you interpret this graph? What, is, what story is this graph telling you? Go ahead, take about 20 seconds and talk. And you can write all over those things. You don't have to answer the questions written down. I'm more interested in verbal and talking about it. But from your calculations, definitely write on the paper. Now, before we get to those answers, I'd like you to turn over to the next page. And you should have something that looks like this. You have these three graphs right here. Okay. So these three graphs did not come from uh, Al Gore. I, got, I found these at Car Carnegie Mellon University at this website right here. And what it d does is for the last thousand years, which I can't even comprehend a thousand years, okay, this is how temperatures have changed over the last thousand years, uh, carbon dioxide has changed, and carbon emissions. So starting with the year 1000 to the year 2000. So let's look at carbon emissions. It's pretty much been what? flat and then all of a sudden in the last 50 years or so what? Takes off. The CO2 concentrations fairly what? Flat and then in the last 50 or 100 years. Now the temperatures, the reason why that's happening is we still have what? Seasons and so on. That's going to change. But they pretty much have been staying the same until what? The last 50 or 100 years. So would you agree that there's some kind of correlation between those three numbers? Carbon emissions, CO2 concentrations and temperature change, okay? So let's go back to that graph here. <coughs> what's, what's along the horizontal? What's, what's, what's this? Years. Years, starting with what? 1850. <coughs> what's significant about 1850 in our history? It's close to what? What's that? Rockefeller. Okay, uh, I think that was a little bit later. Okay, a little bit later. 1850, 1860 is actually what I'm thinking of. What big deal happened in our Civil country in 1860? No. Civil War. Yeah. Kind of, kind of give you a, a thing there. So 1850 is right before the Civil War. Okay. Now 1900 is, I think, more what you're talking about. What, what happened here? Industrial, Industrial revolution. revolution. Okay. And it started to go up, but what really started to take off was right here, and two significant things there. This is right after what? World War II, and we call these the baby boomers, which I am one. Okay, so I was born around right here. Okay, but what happened is what? Proliferation of cars, travel, just using all this, all, all the carbon stuff, and it just is, is taking control. By the way, this is in the world, this is not just what? The United States. Okay, just be aware. Okay. All right, so um, can you even fathom this? Billion metric tons of carbon. Billion. Now, tons, tons are big. Metric tons are bigger. So, billion metric tons. I mean, I can't even fathom that number, okay? All right? So, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to be able to predict what's going to happen in 2020, which is where we are now, or 2025 or 2030, if things go on as they have, and we hope they don't. We hope that what? It starts to level off or at least drop, okay? Um, so what I want to do is I would want to come up with a mathematical equation that would trace this data as good as I could. Is that something you've done in your math classes? Have you modeled any data yet? Have you done that? Yes. Yes, yes you have? Okay. And what you're trying to do is what? Come up with an equation that will go through as many points as possible so that we could use it to do what? Predict what's happening, right? Okay. So, what kind of equations could we use to model? Now, none of them are going to fit perfectly. That rarely happens with real data, right? Especially with what? All these dips and so on. It's not going to fit perfectly. But there's a trend, okay, going along. So, um, first thing I always consider is linear. Is linear a good model for this? No. Terrible model, okay? But what goes after linear? What did you learn after linear? 
parabolas. Could this be half of a parabola? Uh oh. Sorry. So it could be half of a parabola. So would that be one to try? Yes. Okay. This over here. Um, and by the way, parabolas look like this. What's the graph that looks like this? Cubic, right? Okay. Should it be half of a cubic? And then another one that looks like this? Fourth power, right? And then another one that people say, when they see something go slowly and then take off, what's another one, another equation you could use to model? Begins with EX and rhymes with exponential. Exponential, have you heard of exponential growth? Is that something you... And it's okay if you say no, because if you haven't, that means... Have you heard of exponential growth? Because exponential growth grows really fast, and there's also what? Exponential what? Decay. Okay? So this would be what? Could, could be exponential growth. All right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and put the data into the calculators, graph it, and see if we can come up with equations to model this, and then make predictions. Because, and that was the reason I went to this, by the way. I went here because I knew that Al Gore would have really good data and good graphs, and I wanted to get them right from him so that I could go to high school students and say, using the math you know, could we predict what's going on, do some actual modeling. But at the same time, what do I want to make you aware of? This is an issue, and you need to be aware of that. Okay? So kind of a couple things at one time, not just the good mathematics. How's that sound? Are you good with that? Okay. Some of the mathematics we talk about today, you might say, I, we never really did this. Please just go along with me. And some of you say, oh, yeah, we did this. We're fine. Stay with me on that, too. Okay. So with that, let's go ahead and get, grab your calculators. And I'll grab mine. And we do this. Didn't make the noise I wanted, but let's hope. You did not. Oh. All right, so there's why. Not plugged in hard enough. There we go. All right, so what I'd like to do is, um, you're familiar with the calculators a little bit, is that right? Yeah. yeah. Colors? Okay. So uh, first thing we want to do is um, clear out the y equals. So press the y equals button, and we probably have equations in there that we don't want anymore. So just press clear and down arrow, clear, down arrow, until they're all disappeared. Kind of cleaned out. We go there, right? Um, so the worst thing I, I would ask you to do <clears throat> would be to, now that all those data points we had along that curve, or you have that curve in front of you, okay, would me have you type that in. Wouldn't that just be awful? Just, I mean, it would take so long, and you might make a mistake, and whatever. So since I've been using calculators since like 1993, I've always created programs with the data in them. You run the program, the data is put in the calculators. Got it immediately. Okay, that's the way to go. So I'd like you to press the program button, which is right in the middle of the calculator. By the way, how, how we'll do this is when you have questions and you'll get behind and you will, turn to the person next to you, ask for help. If they can't help you, they ask me. How's that sound? If you just blurt out I'm not getting that, I will politely ignore you. I will be polite, but I will ignore you. So don't just blurt it out. You got to ask somebody else first. Okay? Does that sound fair? Okay. All right. So uh, I may have different programs than you have, but you should have the ones we're going to look at today. Now, there are two called Burn Foss. I want the one with two S's. I do not want Burn Foss one. So can you find Burn Foss? Are you all finding that okay? We good? No. No? You don't have it? All right, so looks like your, your students erased them for me. How nice of them to do that. Okay, so um, we have a couple, we need three actually. Uh, make sure they have those two do. You need one? One more? That's it? Um, do you have a, a short key, short thing? I, I do want to have make sure everybody has that. A short uh, cable, calculator, calculator cable. I'm going to borrow yours. Okay. Fair enough. Or did you want to knock these with a couple of years? That's <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. 
so um, sorry about this little thing here, but uh, somebody must have erased them last time. I'm going to slide down and grab an extra battery and card just for the in case, and I'll be right back real quiet. Okay, sorry about that little technical glitch there. So, uh, everybody now, when I go to, can you find Burn Foss? Everybody now has Burn Foss. Okay. So, press enter on Burn Foss, and it comes up and it's ready for you to either execute or run the program. So, press enter and then stop. Is this the screen you're getting? Yep. All right. Notice in the upper right hand corner, do you see that white agitated circle? Yes. That means the program is in pause mode and it's waiting for you to press a particular key to continue. What key is that? How do you know that? Sometimes it won't say that. It'll be speed stuck, so just remember to do what? Press enter to continue. Okay? So we'll press enter to continue. So years 1850 to 2016 in list one, billions of metric tons of carbon in list two. We good? Since you don't trust me, I'm from not from around here. Let's just see if it's in there. So above the program key is the stat key. Press the stat key and then press one or enter. So stat and then one or enter. And you should have this data. Right, you got it? So notice I didn't say 1850, I just said what? 50, for two reasons. One, it was quicker to type in 50, right? The other is when you do regressions, if the numbers are really big, you sometimes get weird results. So I didn't want to get the weird results, okay? So according to this, in 1850, how much carbon was there in the atmosphere? 0.1 billion, billion metric tons, right? Not much. And it didn't go much uh, in the next 10 years. It didn't go up very much here, right? But let's look at the last data. Press the up arrow twice to see the last data. First of all, what year is that? 2016. You have to add 1800 to that, right? 2016, and there was almost what? 10 billion metric tons of carbon. By the way, just look in the last 30 years. It did what? More than double, almost double. Right? That's a lot. And does that what it kind of look like at the end of our graph? Okay? Alright? So what I'd like to do is graph that. Okay? Put that on the graph and then start looking for equations to model it. So to do that, we have to set up a stat plot. The stat plot's in blue, so I have to press what key first? Second. Second, and then y equals. So second y equals takes you to this screen. And I'm going to press 1 or enter for plot 1. First thing I want to do is turn it on, press enter, and the type, I want it, normally I would use a scatter plot, but I want it to look like our picture is, which is connected, so go over to connected if it's not already there, okay, do you already have L1 and L2 in yours, yeah. all of you have L1 and L2, pardon me, no, no, it's done, and done. Uh, Speed here, but after this, you're on your own, okay? Okay, so there we go. Okay. So we want the plot on, we want it on connected. Is this L1 and L2? Yep. If it's not, that's not the letter L in the number one, it's second one is the uh, icon for L1 and second two is for L2, okay? Uh, for the mark, we want the second one from the right. This is too skinny and those are not so good, so do that. And we're fine with blue. We good? So we set up a stat plot. Now what we have to do is set up a window that would make sense here. 
Uh, in the classroom, I normally would say, let's talk about that, but I want to focus more on the math than the window. So just go to window up at the top, and this is the window we'll use. Uh, what was the first year we had? 1850, but just reduce 50, right? So I'll type in 50 for the minimum. And I'm going to go up to 220, that is really what year? The year we're in right now, right? 220 would be 2020, okay? And a scale, oh, let's show every 50 years, okay? For a Y min, we started out kind of zero. I'm going to go with negative one just so I can see the X axis. I know it'll never be negative one. And I think it went up to almost 10, didn't it? So I'm going to go to 11 just be so that we can kind of go beyond where we were and show every one. So start with 1850, 50 to 2020, 220, show every 50 years, and negative one to 11, show every one. Good so far? We already cleared out the y equals, didn't we? Yeah. All right. So now when you press graph, you should see the data. So does that look like your picture? Yes. Does that look like it? Right? By the way, the answer is yes, because it took me like an hour and a half to do that. So yes, the answer is yes to get that data. All right? Um, so um, what we'd like to do is try to model this with some kind of a parabola. You have done this or you haven't? No. Have? Okay. So, so if I'm going too fast, though, just like, let me know. So get off to the home screen. Second mode is quit. Second mode is quit. And then press clear so that we have a nice, clear home screen. All right. So um, press the stat button. And instead of one, press the right arrow to go to calculate. So I press the stat button, the right arrow to calculate. And uh, which one of those numbers do we want to do? Five for what? Quadratic regression, a parabola. So go down. So you can just press the number five. I usually go down to it and press enter, but you can just press the number five. Either way, this should pop up on the screen. So we stop there and make sure we're all there. You're all there? Good. So we want our X list to be L1. So if it's not there, second one will do that. Second two will get me list two. There's no frequency list for this. And we're going to store the regression equation. Since it's a quadratic, we're going to store it in Y2 to remind me that it's what? Quadratic. <coughs> All right? Also, Y1 is blue and so is the graph blue. I'd like to see different colors. Okay? So where do I get those? Alpha followed by trace is where the Y variables live. Alpha followed by trace gives you a list of the Y variables. And so number two. So this says for form of quadratic regression, x is from list 1, y is from list 2, store it in y2. You need to press enter twice, once to get down to calculate and once to actually calculate. Are you getting these numbers? Yeah. Some of you may not be getting r squared. Who is not getting r squared? Just you. Everybody else is getting r squared? Okay, so I'll just talk you through this real quick. It's because they reset your account. Well, the other guys, you should, who else? You, got? you should know. Do you have R-squared? Yeah. Oh, that was nice of them to do that. Um, so to do that, go to mode, and then press the up arrow. None of you have to do this except she does. Go up to stat diagnostics. Press the up arrow until you get to stat diagnostics. Go over to on and press enter. Also, while we're at there, yeah, that's supposed to leave it there. So you got that? So I'm going to go back. Second mode is quit, and this is just for you. Okay. Press the up arrow twice, and you get this. Press enter twice. And now you should have R squared. We're good? We're good? All right. R squared, the closer that is to 1, the better the match should be. Would you say this is pretty close to 1? Yeah. yeah. Not bad. It's not like 98.6%, okay, but it's, it's just an indicator. Okay. So let's go ahead and press graph and see how good it looks. So the data's in blue, the graph, our, our modeling equation, the quadratic is in red. So now I'd like to do is talk about how good of a fit is this. Talk about it. This is an opinion. This is just an opinion. <laughs> Coming together in five, four, all right, so if you look at this starting at the beginning, 
the red is our, our regression, our modeling equation. What is it? If I tried to do it here, it's too what? Too high, right? Too high to predict it. And then it's exactly right here, but now it's what? Too low. Too low, then what? Too high. Too high, too low, and then it's kind of, back here, it seems to be what? Pretty good, right? Where is the most important part if I want to predict the future? At the end, correct? Right? So would you agree, for me to predict the future, this would be a pretty good one to use, at, look, at least based on appearance. Yeah. Right? Based on appearance. Okay? So let's try to find the prediction using this equation for 2020. And I'll show you for several different ways to do this. The most obvious one to me is press trace. So press the trace button. Notice it turns red up here. Okay? But notice I'm tracing on what? The data. Right? I'd like to trace on the equation, on the graph, the red equation. So press the up or down equation, the variable, or arrow, sorry, and it'll always take you to the middle of the screen to start. By the way, talk this over right now in your groups. What does this ordered pair mean in this problem situation? Go ahead and talk that. Make sure you understand what that means. Um, All right, so 135 is the what? Year. Year. year, but it's really what year? 935, okay, when we had the Great Recession, Great Depression. Okay. What is this? 1.32 what? Billion. Billion metric tons of carbon. So approximately, according to our equation, that that's what we would predict. By the way, is that too high, too low, or just right? Too high. Too high, right? Okay. So I'd like to find it out for 2020. Right? So keep pressing the right arrow, and it looks like I might not get to, what, 220 to get to 2020, 220? Mm -hmm. So when you're on the equation, just type in 220, 220, and the calculator automatically says, oh, you want X to be that number? Press Enter. And according to our modeling equation, we would predict that the amount of carbon is about what? 10.4 billion metric tons. Does that seem reasonable to you? Yeah. I would say it's reasonable, right? Because it was about 10, what, five years before that or something like that, so it's reasonable, okay? Now, somebody said, well, we should just stop there. Well, there might be a better modeling equation. And so I like to use this for the analogy. How many of you have ever watched the Weather Channel? Anybody ever watched the Weather Channel? Especially when they're having hurricanes. Have you ever heard them say things like, we expect the hurricane to hit tomorrow at noon, according to the European model. Have you ever heard something like that? Okay. And then they'll say, but the American model says it's going to be like 2 o'clock. And some other model said it might be this. Because there are what? Different models, just like we're going to have here. We're going to try quadratic, but we're also going to try what? Cubic, quartic, exponential, and see which one seems reasonable. And that becomes where you argue and say, this is the reason why, and you have to convince somebody why yours is the best one. So there's no real correct answer. You have to make sure you can argue which one is the best one and have reasons for it. Is that making sense? And this is what people do with mathematics, really. Okay. All right. So with that, oh, let me show you a couple other ways to get the, two, the uh, for 2020. Um, how about if I use a table? You guys used tables before? So press second window. That allows you to set the table. Second window allows you to set the table. And uh, let's start the table at like 2015, 215, and have a delta table of one. And these should both be black for automatic. So do you have that your same table set up I do? Okay. So press second graph. Second graph is table. And according to this, is for our prediction, 215 is about 9.65. But if I arrow down to 220 and go over, you'll say it only shows two digits. But if you go over on top of the number, it shows what? Much more, many more significant digits. So is that still the answer we got when we traced? The answer is yes, it is. It's just a different way. Another way to use the table, go back to second window. Go back to table setup. I don't care what these are. Go down to the first auto. Make a right turn to ask and press enter. Okay? Now go to table. Second graph is table. And somebody say, well, that was mean. There are no numbers there. It's waiting for you to ask for the numbers you want. 
for example, 220. And there it is. And somebody said, well, I'd like to know what it is in 2025. That would be 225. Or 2030, 230. So it allows you to ask for the numbers you want so you don't have to keep scrolling. Okay? Anybody like that one? <coughs> I like it, but when I don't want it, I don't want it. So let's go back to table set. Second window table set. And um, go back to auto. Okay? As much as I like ask, when I don't want it, I don't want it. And the last way, I, I think is my favorite, um, what, 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 what Y variable did we use for this? Y what? Two, right? Go to the home screen. Second mode is quit. What, was it, what were the shortcut keys to get to the Y variables? Alpha, alpha trace. trace. Alpha trace. And bring up Y2. Okay, go to alpha trace. Bring up Y2. Now, have you ever done like F of 4, F of 5, evaluated a function at different numbers? Have you done that before? Mm -hmm. So I'll go F, and then what do I type? A parentheses, a 4, and a parentheses. We'll do the same thing here. The left parentheses is above the number 8. So Y2 evaluated at uh, 220, right parentheses. So this says, whatever the equation is in Y2, substitute X with 220, do all those calculations, press Enter, and does that number look familiar to you? So this is another way to evaluate a function um, using function notation as you've been using. So we've got graph, trace, we've got function, we've got table, a couple different ways, and we've got this evaluation. Okay, we good? All right? All right. So with that, let's try, let's go ahead and look at maybe a cubic, see what the cubic is. So go back to y equals, and I don't want to see the quadratic, but I don't want to get rid of it either. So see how it has a black box around the equal sign? Go on top of that black box, press enter once, and the black box goes away. Which means it'll still evaluate, but it's not going to graph. I still have, out, I have access to it. Good? Okay. So, second mode is quit. Let's do a cubic regression on this. So that would be stat over to calculate, only this time which number? Number six. Still L1 and L2 still there, yep. right? Uh, store regression equation, well, we might as well go with what? Three to show the cubic third power. So that's, how, what again is your shortcut? Alpha trace. Alpha trace is the shortcut. Y3. So cubic regression, L1, X's are L1, Y's are L2. Y3, now I have to press enter twice. Once to get down to calculate, and once to actually calculate. By the way, look at that R squared. Pretty close to what? One. Let's look at the graph and see how good it looks. What do you think? Is that better than the quadratic? Yeah. Yeah. I think so. Um, but again, where, where's my most important place to look? Not here, but what? Up here. And it still looks like it's pretty good, right? So use at least two of the ways I showed you to figure out 20, the prediction for 2020. Whether it's the graph, the trace, the table, the function notation. Do at least two of those ways, just, just to see if you learned anything. And help each other. By all means, help each other. Come back together in five seconds. All right, so I'm curious, how many of you use trace? Anybody use trace to do this? Okay, trace, and after you do the up arrow, and what was it, 220? 10.85. A little bit higher than our other prediction, right? Which one's right? We really don't know, right? We really don't know, but, but we know it's going to somewhere in that ballpark, okay? Uh, how many of you did uh, second graph table? Did, did that? Found it? Okay. Same answer? Right? Um, and how many of you did um, alpha trace and brought up um, 
brought up y3 and evaluated it at 220. Anybody do it that way? Okay. All those ways should get you the same value. Okay. Right. Now, normally I'd go on and we would do the quadratic, we would do the quartic, we would do the exponential, and then we'd do what? Argue which one is best. Okay. By the way, guess which one is the worst? Exponential. Because exponential does what? Goes up very fast. And, and this will give you an answer like 12 for your prediction, which we hope is off. And the reason for that, exponential grows much faster than polynomials do, at least polynomials of degree 2, 3, and 4. Okay. So how are we doing so far? Doing okay? Learn a little math, learn a little bit about the calculator, learn about Feynman, right? Yeah. Okay? Good. Okay. All right, so let me go back to um, PowerPoint. We got there. So we've already talked about this, okay? All right? We already talked about that. But this we haven't. Carbon dioxide is being released into the atmosphere faster than at any time in at least the last 66 million years, which I can't even fathom yesterday, let alone 66 million years ago. Okay. The energy trap by man-made global warming is now equivalent to exploding 400,000 Hiroshima atomic bombs per day, every day of the year. You know, with Hiroshima? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Very sad. I've been to Hiroshima. I've been to Ground Zero. Very sad place to be. Um. That's one bomb. How many of them happening every day? Okay. Every single day. That's in the pollution. That's causing. We already talked about this. I'm just bringing that back again. Okay. So let's look at this part right here. Okay. See, if you, I think you have this. Yep. You also have my color one. I'm going to grab this just for a minute. So you all have this too. Please do not write on this one. You can write all over the other one, but not the color one. Those are too expensive for me to reproduce. But just keep them in the plastic. Okay. You all finding? We can borrow that too. You all finding that one? Okay. This group right here finding that one? Okay. Okay, got it. Okay. All right. So, summer temperatures have shifted. This is the title of this. Um, this is a, a pretty cool looking graph. I love the color, by the way. It's much better in color. Okay. Um, have any of you talked about standard deviations? Have any of you ever heard that word before? Okay, it's used quite a bit in statistics. So it's okay that you haven't. That's enough to, to, to know. All right. Um, so, this is summer temperatures. And we're calling blue cooler than average, white is considered average, and red is considered warmer than average, okay? And this is global. This is global, not just the United States, okay? Um, and I'd like you to guess right now, if I called the area under this 100%, that's 100%, I'd like you to predict what you think percent this is, what percent this is, and what percent that is, if the total is 100%. And it's just a guess, so there are really no wrong answers. So talk about that. What do you think? So I'm curious what answers you have. Would anybody want to share their answer? What, what, what do you think percent is blue? Do you have any answer? 33. You think it's 33 percent? You think it's 33 percent? So you, what do you think about the white? 33. Do you think these are equally distributed? The answer is yes, they are. Okay. They figured that a third of the word is going to be considered cooler, a third is going to be an average, and a third is going to be some warmer. Okay, we're good with that. Okay. So thank you for sharing your answer. Thank you. You have to take it out. The user interface isn't very good on it. That's the answer. Thank you. All right. So even though you don't know about standard deviations, there are certain things you do know. Would you agree that the median would be about right at x equals zero? Yes. That means that half of the data is where? To the left, and half is what? To the right. So half of the temperatures in the world are considered either what? Cooler than average, or average, or the other half is what? Average or warmer than average. That makes sense. By the way, this concept of cooler and warmer is kind of nebulous a little bit, but I think you can get a feel for it. Okay. 
Uh, and this data is from NASA, okay, so it should be reliable, all right? So this is, makes a lot of sense to me because this is what, about when I was born, 1952, okay? So this is how temperatures were considered normal. And so since that's the case, we're going to call this the baseline. And notice how they used a green curve to kind of outline this. Does that make sense? That curve has a shape that you've all seen. Looks like a what? A bell. A Liberty Bell sort of thing. Those things look, kind of look like a bell. It's called a bell curve. It's also called a normal curve. Okay? We good so far? We're going to call this the baseline, meaning that's, that's what we're going to call standard. Okay? That's standard. Let's look at 10 years after this, from 1983 to 1993. I'd like you to talk about what happened there. Just about your interpretation, just looking at the picture. Talk to the person next to you. What happened? Yeah. Uh, right, coming back in five, four, so what happened to this data? What did it do? It got hotter and shifted which way? To the right. To the right. Okay, it shifted, right? Shifted. In, in math, we sometimes say it's skewed. It's skewed to the right, okay? Um, does it still look like a, a bell curve? Yeah. Yeah. It's just been shifted over, right? Okay. Uh, and the median has been changed. About where is the median? About. Would you agree it's about right here? Yeah. Roughly, right? Okay. Which means what? Half of the data is where? Here, and the other half is here. Half of the data now is what? Average or what? Cooler than average. The other half is what? Warmer than average and a new place called what? Extremely hot that we didn't even have before. And that happened in a matter of about 13 years. All right, we good so far? All right? Next 10 years. What happened? Shifted more. Where is the median on this one? About, about where the one is, would you agree? So now half of the world is what? Cooler, average, or starting to be warmer than average, and the rest is what? The other half is what? Warmer and extremely hot. We're still not to, to, north, to where we are now. By the way, this green line, that's where I grew up. I grew up in this. We had sled riding all the time. From November to March, there was snow on the ground almost all the time. It doesn't happen anymore. Because what? Everything's getting warmer. Everything's getting warmer, okay? So here's the next set of things. Look what happened. It's even what? Further skewed to the right. And where would the median be here? About right here, right? So now half the world is what? Hot or extremely hot. And the other half still has got hot and the other guy, right? Notice this. The extreme used to be one-tenth of a percent of the entire population. Now it's almost 15%. It's called extremely hot. And we're not even to where we are now. We're five years behind. For a half So you've never studied bell curves or normal curves or standard deviations, but did that those four graphs tell a good story? Right? Really hits you with it. So without doing a whole lot of mathematics. Okay? And the the main thing is knowing where the what? The median is, because now you're starting to talk about 50%, 50%. We're good? All right. 17 of the hottest of the 18 hottest years on record have occurred since the year 2001. The four hottest years have been these. You say, where's 2018? We were still doing 2018 when I got the data, but it's in there. It would be in the top five. Great. 41 consecutive years of global temperature above the 1900s. Okay, 20th century average. 41 years in a In Japan in 2018 in July, just before I met with Al Gore, a couple weeks before, 77 people died and over 30,000 were taken to hospital because they had heat waves in Japan. Now the reason I'm telling you this is, when you, when you think of things, a lot of you just think of what? East Liverpool? Some of you might think of the area. Some of you think of Ohio and West Virginia, maybe Pennsylvania. But what are we talking about here? The whole world, global. This is a global issue, not just around here. Okay. Um, 
in Algeria, the temperature was 124 degrees. What's the hottest you ever remember feeling? 101. 100, 101. Some people I go to, if you go to like um, Arizona, you get like 110. 124. Even with heat index, with humidity, it doesn't get that hot around here. So I can't even imagine that. Okay. Uh, Montreal, Canada, around the 4th of July, 90 people died. Just overwhelmed with heat. Great city, temperatures up to 144 degrees in July 2007, and this is really sad. So hot, birds dropped out of the sky while they were flying. It was just too hot. Greenland, are you all familiar with Greenland? Yeah. What should it really be called? Iceland. And Iceland? Greenland. 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 But Greenland had a better public relations person, okay? So they, they said, come to Greenland, you know? Liars, liars. Um, so this, let's take like a, a quick break. I think we could do like yeah. a quick break here, okay? Yeah. So uh, let's look at this next slide here. Anybody know what this is? Glacier. And what is it doing? Melting violently, right? It's melting violently. And, and that's, is that what they're supposed to do? We want them cold. Okay? We don't, because when they melt, they become water and then what? Ocean dries. Okay. So, um, this is a picture of a glacier in summer of 1935. Lots of ice and snow, right? Like you would expect. And then uh, 80 years later, well, I'd, go, I'd go have a picnic there. Okay, nice like brook there, nice little stream and so on. Uh, so, the people who work for Al Gore, I thought this was clever. Look how they cleverly put this graph on top of that picture to show what? Declining ice mass in Greenland. Kind of look clever there, okay? Mm -hmm. So look at the horizontal axis, look at the vertical axis, and talk about what this picture is telling you. How would you interpret this graph? Go ahead. Coming back in five. All right, so let's look at this. Along the bottom, what, what is this? What, what, what are we measuring here? This is what? Years, right? Okay. And this is what? Change in ice mass in gigatons? Now, you know tons. Tons are big, right? Gigatons on the order of 10 to the ninth pounds. Okay, so we're talking what? We're not talking like a ton, like an elephant or something. We're talking what? Just unbelievable things, okay? So the graph is a little bit hard to read at first, um, but basically it's saying at this point in 2002, we're going to call that zero, meaning what? Ice hasn't melted. Whatever it is, we're going to call that the standard, okay? And then what happens? It did what? It went down, then it went back up, and down, went back up, and so on. Why is it fluctuating like that? Seasons. It still has seasons, right? Still has seasons, okay? But each season still is what? Going down. It's getting warmer, losing more ice, right? Losing more ice, okay? All right, so um, what I'd like to do is come up with an equation to model this, which would just be awful because there aren't equations. Are any equations that go like this? Actually, there are. It's called a sine wave. I don't know if you've ever seen a sine wave. Yeah. Except the sine wave stays along this, right? This is a sine wave that's kind of being pulled down. It's called a degenerate sine wave, but we won't worry about that. Let's use something else. What's, a, what's the simplest equation we could use to model? Simplest a line, a linear equation. Line, right? A linear equation. And a line, would you agree, would kind of do what? Go about in the middle of it? Yeah. And it'll give you a sense of what's going on on the average. Does that make sense? Okay. So let's go ahead and put the data in the calculator for this and come up with a linear equation and interpret what that means, okay? All right? So back to the calculator here. Um, go to y equals. Um, let's clear the equations. So go to y equals, and if there's something here, press clear, and down arrow and press clear, okay? <coughs> And then press program. The name of the program we want is called Green Ice with an E, not Green Ic 1. That's different. Green Ice with an E. All finding Green Ice with an E? 
By the way, I don't think I mentioned this before. The reason why those are so cryptic is this is an old computer chip in it, and you can only have up to eight characters to name something. So that's why I had to be very cryptic. I couldn't say Greenland ice melting or something like that. Green ice. We good? So let's go ahead and run green ice without the one. Enter. Enter again. <coughs> and we have the pre press enter to continue. All right, so it says the years 2002 to 2017 in list one, change in ice mass and gigatons in list two. Okay, we got that, All right? So let's go look at that, okay? Uh, uh, again, you press stat and one or enter. Stat and one or enter, okay? And so this is where it's a little bit weird, but it, it, sh it should make sense. This says 2.29, which is really what? 2002 and 29 hundredths of a year. Because like if I put April in here in May, would that make any sense mathematically? I would not know how, where to put things, okay? So they're using parts of a year, okay? So a third of the year would be about April. Would you agree around April? Does that sound about a third of the year, okay? So they're saying in April of 2002, we're saying there's no change. We're saying that's, that's, what, that's where we're starting off, okay? Uh, then in what? About six-tenths, which would be, what, July or August? It dropped this many in that many few times, okay? And then back here in 2003, also in probably April or May, it warmed up, so it did what? The ice mass went back up. Is this making sense to you now? Okay. All right. Press the up arrow twice. Let's see what the bottom line is. So this is saying in 2017, in May, right, almost June, would you agree? Okay. Or maybe even June, I'm not sure. It says what? We were like negative 37, 7... 3,771 less gigatons of ice than we were when we started, which is a lot, right? Okay, we're not talking about tons, we're talking about what? 10 to the ninth tons, lots of ice. Can't even imagine that, okay? We're good so far. So what we're going to do is we're going to plot this, okay? So to do that, uh, I need a window, so I'll change the window, uh, press the window, and uh, my X, uh, I'm going to start at negative 1. And I'll explain that in a minute, just trust me. And I'm going to go up to um, 20 for the year 2020. And we'll show everyone every single year, that's fine. Um, for Y min, I'm going to go with negative 4,000. Y max, positive 1,000. And a scale of positive 1,000. So I have the same window that I have there. And normally in the classroom we would talk about this because it talks about domain and range, but I want to get to the heart of the mathematics, so I'm leaving that out, sorry. All right, so now I need to go back and make sure my stat plot is set up. So second y equals, my stat plot right now is off, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn on number one, and everything else there is fine. I like it to be connected, L1 and L2, this dot here in blue. We good? Press graph and hopefully you typed it in correctly. Are you getting that picture? Yeah. Does that look like the picture you have? Oh, by the way, did you find this somewhere? You have this, right? Yeah. Does this look like this? Again, the answer is yes because it took a long time to type the data in. By the way, when I went to the website that had the data, you would think the data would be like in a, in a spreadsheet, right? Year, amount, and so on. It was all side by side. It was real. It was just a mess. Just a mess to get it. So anyway, I was glad to get it. Glad to get it. All right. So now we've got this. Let's go ahead and come up with an equation, a linear equation that kind of goes through the middle of this. Okay. So I'll, I'll go back to the home screen. Second mode is quit. Second mode is quit. And press stat. Right arrow to calculate. So it was stat. Right arrow to calculate. And number four is linear regression. So is number eight, but it's a different way. We'll just do number four. List one, yes. List two, yes. Now, normally, normally for the regression equation, I put it in Y1, but I know my data is blue and Y1 is blue, so I'm going to put it in Y2 so it's a different color. So alpha trace, Y2. So linear regression, X's are L1, Y is list two, store in Y2, enter twice. That R is not, that R squared should, we like it, did I explain that we like that close to one or did I not mention this before? 
We did? Yeah. So that's not too bad, but it's not going to be close to one because what? The data is waving. It's not very linear, okay? But when we graph it, would you agree that's a pretty decent line in between? Okay, look about pretty good, okay? So press trace and press the up arrow to get onto the equation. You want to see the equation. Y equals negative 275 something times X plus 849, okay? Uh, right now, are you all at this point right here, the middle of the screen? Explain to each other, what does this mean in this problem? What, does, what do these two numbers mean in this problem? Go ahead. All right, coming back in five. All right, so this 9.5 is really what year? 2009. 2009 and halfway through, right? So probably probably actually July 1st, because the first six months would be half, and the next six months would be around July 1st, okay? Somewhere around there, okay? And according to this, <coughs> this negative 1770 is what? It means the ice mass has gone down 1,770 gigatons. gigatons of ice since we started collecting it in April of 2002. Does that make sense? I have to say we're since when. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. We good so far? Yes, sir. Okay. So, oh, somebody erased the equation. Well, here's what we need to do. Here's the equation. Let's round these to the nearest whole number. Y equals negative 276X plus 849, okay? What does this number mean in this problem, negative 276? And what does this 849 mean in this problem? Okay, so talk about that. Talk about that. Give me about a minute. Talk about that. What do those two numbers mean? Negative 276 and the 849. All right, coming back in five seconds. All right, so I'm open for suggestions here. What does the negative 276 mean here? All right, it is a slope, but in this problem, what does it mean? So like in, in your math class, yeah, that's the slope, and the other is the y-intercept. I get that. But what does it mean when you're talking to somebody? How much? How much ice you're losing per year? We're, we're lo and the negative indicates what? Losing. <coughs> 276 what? Gigatons. <coughs> gigatons of ice per year. year. And by the way, you get it by the axes, right? Gigatons of ice per year. Change in y over change in x. That's where that comes from, okay? Um, so, good answer. I like your answer, okay? All right. Um, What's the 849? That's the tough. Y intercept. It is the y intercept. But what does it mean? What color you're starting with? Um, coming back, it'd be a little more clear. That's actually never coming back. Actually, it's not coming back from when? Um, this was not oh, yeah, being taken away from. That's what the value would be if it was in the year 2000, which is before the graph. If it were to stay consistent. Okay. I'm not sure if you meant that or not, but I, it's what, how he's saying is correct. Okay? So thank you. thank you. So here's the deal. This is right here. What's the order of care right there? Zero, 849, right? What is zero in this problem, though? It's not zero. It's the year 2000. 2000. And it's positive 849, meaning it's what? It's 849. Gigatons. more gigatons of ice than we started with right here. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. 
0849 is what the amount of ice would have been in the year. We, we, we predict the ice would have been in 2000. When, because we can't say for sure because we didn't start collecting till when? Yeah, right there. Yeah. I think that's what you meant. I'm not sure if that's what you meant. No, not really. Okay, so good. Thank you for being honest. Okay. Um, but does that make sense to you now, though? Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, what? Come back, please. It's me. There we go. All right, good. Um, so that's a little bit hard for people to realize. Now, the reason I bring this up is how many of you are going to take the ACT or SAT test someday, or maybe you already have? We've, we've yeah. taken it Tuesday. They like these types of questions where they'll give you a line in a problem situation and say, what does this number mean? And most kids will say, oh, it's a slope. Yeah, it is, but not in this problem. It's also what? The average amount of ice lost every year. And what is this? This is what? The amount of ice that would be present, would have been present in 2000, what we predicted to be, okay? So they like those types of questions. So this, this is not being lost on you. It's good. You can actually use this somewhere. All right, we good? All right. Now, the other thing is, um, how about if I could match this? Would you be impressed that I could match that with a curve? All right. So I spent about an hour on this, and I'm going to show you an equation I came up with that seemed. Now, by the way, I, I, do you know what I see by sine wave? Have you, any of you seen a sine wave before? It goes up and down like this, kind of rounded. Okay. So I looked at that, and it looked like a sine wave, except like I said, it's fallen down. So I did some mathematics, and I came up with this equation of the sine curve not falling down. 105 sine of the quantity, 6.2x. Oops, that's not x. x plus 0 0.6. Uh, right parentheses. Yes. So let me go ahead and um, graph that and not the line. So would you agree that this looks like this except going horizontal? Yes. Yeah. Right? I need this to fall down, right? Yeah. And this is what I discovered. I thought this was kind of cool. See if anybody else thinks this is kind of cool. So I got, I got the Y4 and I got the Y2. So in Y5, I decided to graph alpha trace Y4 plus my line, which was in Y2. All right? Now, watch. Everybody impressed by that? Okay. Now, here's the thing. I, I did some mathematics that you'll learn, okay, in trigonometry on how I got this to be, okay? And you'll notice mine's very uniform. It just keeps repeating the same pattern, whereas this what? This is not repeating the same pattern because it's what? Real data. Right. But the, what got me was, I was able to take this, and what made it fall down was our linear equation. It pulled it down what? Perfectly. I just thought that was so cool that that worked that way. Okay, so maybe I'm the only one. But that's all right. It's okay. All right, we good? All right. So this is how you can use mathematics. That's kind of my thing. So we talked about the Greenland ice mass. Okay. So 93% of the extra heat trapped by man made global warming goes into the ocean. Is that a good thing? Uh -oh. no. The oceans are getting warm. That's going to be cause problems in a lot of different ways. So this is a cool graph. That was kind of a cool graph because it says up until this year we're going to say that the global temperatures were kind of cool and now they're getting what? Hotter. Okay. But notice they're all they're all still getting hotter no matter how you look at this. Okay. Getting hotter. But the next graph I thought was really kind of cool. And that is, not only is the ocean getting hotter, it's getting hotter at different depths. Does this make sense how this shows you here? So how to think about that is, let's say you're a fish, and you normally swim at like 100 meters, and your food gets so hot, your food can't live there anymore. It goes somewhere else. Guess what? You're out of luck. Or you got to go swimming somewhere else. Okay, so this has caused a lot more problems than just getting warmer. Okay. And half the occurrence has occurred in the last 20 years. The, hope, well, the ocean is getting warm fast. Okay. 
Hurricane Harvey, you're all familiar. Do you remember Hurricane Harvey? You're too young for that, okay? One of the worst we've seen in Houston, okay? Um, this went from a tropical depression to a Cat 4 hurricane in just two days. That's unheard of. And the reason it did is, this body of water, you know what body of water is outside of Houston? The Gulf of Mexico is getting what? Warmer, giving hurricanes much more energy to destroy things, okay? Um, Harvey's five-day rain total was a 1 in 25,000 year event. Which, at first, when you read that, you just go, oh, I'm so glad. It's, this won't happen for another what? 25,000 years. Read on. Read on. And some number, it was a 1 in half a million year event, which sounds so good until you start seeing some more data. Needle in Texas had almost 5.5 feet of rain in one rainfall. That's like my height in rain. Okay? Um, this is the path that Harvey took, went on land, came back, okay? The Gulf of Mexico was seven degrees hotter than it normally is, to a depth of 200 meters, really warm. And that makes it what? More powerful, more energy, more destructive, okay? At the same time, the same week, we were not aware of this, 1,400 people died in South Asia also because of flooding. Why didn't we know this? We had enough problems with our own country, right? We weren't paying attention. But this is a global issue. This is not United States. This is all over. Climate crisis impact hurricanes. If you watch the Weather Channel, they tell you these things. Warmer oceans, more intense hurricanes. They intensify more rapidly. They also lead to heavier downpours, which we'll see pictures of in a minute. Storm surge increases due to sea level rise. And the worst one right now, a wavier jet stream holds storms in place longer. Do you remember the last hurricane we had in Florida? came over Florida, guess what it didn't do? It didn't move. It just stayed there and just beat the heck out of Florida. Normally it does what? Hits and moves on. But it didn't. Okay, so, an issue. This is also a shame. Almost 5,000 people died in Puerto Rico. Okay? And it's still not been rebuilt. Maria went from a Cat 1 to a Cat 5 in 18 hours. That's quick. That's really fast. That's like saying, right now, we have a Cat 1, and 18 hours from now, less than 24 hours, you got to get off this. This is the worst hurricane you can get. Except what's the problem with being in a hurricane on Puerto Rico? It's an island. There's no place to go. And there's no, not enough, you're not even told enough to be able to get off. You're just in trouble. Hurricane Sandy, is that something you know about New York? That was hurricanes in New York. Is New York supposed to have hurricanes? No. I feel like Florida, South Carolina, right? Okay. So in 1880, they say, the chance of that happening is going to happen every 500 years. Don't worry about it. If it happens once, It'll be 500 years before it happens again. 2017, they're saying it could happen every 25 years. 10 years from now, they could say this could happen every five years. New York City could get hit with that kind of a hurricane. And they're not built for that. They're just not built for that. Fine. The downpours get bigger. These are not fake. These are not science fiction um, pictures. This is from Montana. It looks like somebody created this. This is just dumping water on the state of Montana. Phoenix, Arizona. This next one is from Tucson. And I was, I was working in Tucson, and some people said, yeah, that's pretty much what it looks like. Now, you might say, oh, that's like a bucket dumping. That's on an entire city. That's not like just a little bucket. This is just huge. There have been 16 one in a 1,000 year downpour events in the United States since May of 2010. That's a lie, me just saying that. How could they happen every thousand years if we've had, what, 16 of them in less than 10 years? The, the, average, the new average is different now, okay? What used to be isn't, isn't, isn't the case. Eight major flood events in three years, three one in 500 years, one in a thousand year event. Again, they're happening much more often. This is what they used to do. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Oh my God. So 24 inches of rain in 26 hours, okay? Um, Pensacola is one up on the canyon. The next, this next video is the scariest one to me. Um, you're going to see, this was in, the next day, by the way. This is in Baltimore, the next day after this happened. And you're going to see a guy about my age walk by the camera calmly. Like, everything's fine, just like I feel right now. Everything's fine. I'm fine with this. But I want you to watch what happens about five seconds later. Okay. 
I'm not exactly sure what happened, but I don't think it was good. The whole side of the road just went because of rain. Okay? The whole side of the road just went. And by the way, was anybody even alarmed about it? No. At first. No. Everybody. Until what? Now they started screaming like, hey, there's something going on. But five seconds before that, that guy's just like, hey, you know, I'm walking my dog or whatever. Okay? Really? Miami Beach now gets flooding during high tides in downtown. It's a common occurrence. Okay. Uh, more, the water's higher than it's ever been. This is my daughter lives outside of D.C. Um, I hope this is a joke that this guy is fishing right next to the Washington Monument. I hope that's a joke. Okay, just, I know there was flooding, but I don't think there's fish there. Okay. Um, weather catastrophes are going up. Extreme temperatures, droughts, fires, mudslides, floods, storms. You can see that all of them are getting what? Bigger, more often. Okay. Um, and now, since you have more heat, now you're going to have what? water being sucked out of the earth, and you're going to have more droughts. So look at this picture. Have you ever seen earth this cracked? Look at that, okay? And it says the water in this reservoir, which was way back here, is 11% of normal. Not down 11%, but what? 11% of what it was before, okay? This one, India, worst drought in 140 years, okay? I was out in California working with some teachers, and they said, oh, yeah, I've been to that, that dam right there. That's kind of cool. Three years later, there's no reason to have a dam. Three years later. It's California. We're drought in 600 years. Then we have uh, fires. The fire. we, we don't get, we, that doesn't really affect us directly, right? We don't get those fires. But notice now, the fire season is now three months long, more than three months longer than the year I graduated from high school. Not three months long, three months what? Longer. Okay. And the next one, I was actually in Napa that day. I'd done some work for San Jose schools for two days, and my wife said, yeah, I'd like to go to Napa and see the wineries and all that stuff. So my wife woke up at 3 o'clock in the morning and said, we don't have any power in our hotel. I said, oh, don't worry, they'll get it fixed by morning. We woke up, and there's cinders in the air, black clouds, no power anywhere. And I didn't even know how to fly, get back to San Francisco, but that was the least of my worries. As we're driving, we're seeing all these wineries that we saw yesterday disappear. They no longer exist. They went from yesterday being a great place to go to, they don't exist. Fire was just that quick. Recently in October, the San Fernando Valley, which is a very nice place, had acres and acres of homes burned. And I thought this was kind of a cool graph. Hotter years yield hotter or use more fires. Does that make sense? Is the, see that correlation there? I thought that was kind of a cool thing. Again, I'm the only one, but okay. Um, China's air pollution has cut its life expectancy by five and a half years in the north part of the country. Even their um, Shanghai Academy of Social Sciences say it's not even longer for human beings to live in Beijing. And that was six years ago. U.S. Department of Defense, climate change will, lead, will likely lead to food and water shortages, pandemic diseases, disputes over refugees and resources, and destruction by natural disasters in regions across the globe. How many of you are familiar with Syria? Anybody here Syria? Is that a place you want to go, go um, vacation? Yeah. It's probably the most troubled spot in the world right now. It's very dangerous. Do you know why it is so crazy there? Drought. A drought started all of this. A drought was where people couldn't get water, they couldn't grow food, the government couldn't take care of them, so they started to rebel and it's just gotten crazy. Okay, it started because of climate. And that's what the Department of Defense is saying. So these are, if I can't appeal to you, this is how they're trying to appeal to you by the cost of carbon. This is what costs money. All these things that we have are all costing money for everybody, okay, costing billions of dollars. The number one threat to the global economy, not just the United States, but all over. Okay? So now that I've scared the heck out of you, I have about 15 minutes to show tell you there are some hope. Okay? Um, there are solutions. Okay? And the solutions are solar cells. Solar-powered cells are now possible. And what kind of graph would, do, would, would be modeling here? Uh, 
What's that? Yeah, cost is going down. Did you guys talk? We talked about exponential. Did we talk about exponential? This is exponential decay, being going down very quickly. Okay. Um, solar capacity is going up, which is a good thing. Uh, cumulative storage capacity is going up. In fact, uh, I look at this. Some math teacher must have come up with this data because this is like the smoothest data that I've ever seen. Okay. Iron battery prices are going down, which is a good thing, almost linearly. Okay? Cost of clean ener energy technologies in the United States. What's happening to all of the costs of clean energy technology? All going down, and in only a matter of 10 years, going on drastically. So if we invest in those things, we can keep the air cleaner for a longer time. Is there any precedent for such a rapid adoption of a new technology? The answer is yes. Cell phone subscriptions. But you'll look at this and say, this isn't going up rapidly, right? Would you agree this isn't? These are the developed countries where we live, Europe and so on, okay? But look at the developing countries in green. Would you agree those have taken off? Yes. Why? What don't they have there in Africa and in a lot of countries? They don't have electricity. They don't have cell towers. They don't have any of that stuff. But how can they get cell phones to work now? Solar. And where are they getting their cell towers? No, they don't have cell towers. They're using what? Satellites. Okay? They weren't able to do that before, but with this, they are able to do that. Another favorite graph of mine, as the price of LED lighting goes down, the number of installations goes up. Any SAT takers out there? SAT loves to have give you a graph with two different vertical axes and ask you to interpret the graph. This is one of my favorite pictures, too. In Africa, Sierra Leone, Africa. They don't have electricity, but what are they using here? Solar panels. Solar panels to power what? Yes, Cheap laptops that they, five years ago, couldn't have been done. Okay, with technology, they could do it. Okay, before, they probably just had those desks. Vatican, Sarah. <coughs> but I'm going, I'm going to the Vatican in May. I want to look for this. Not that that's why I'm going. And so Chile uh, has really gone taking the solar market by storm since 2013. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I think we got the idea. Could you, could you just, okay, we got the idea. We got the idea. <laughs> so look at the comparison over the last few years. So they're doing their best so that they don't have, you know, all these green, all these, you know, uses of carbon. Enough solar energy reaches Earth every hour to fill all the world's energy needs for a full year. Wow. But what, what, what have we figured out how to do yet? How to harness that yeah. to be able to get it distributed, okay? But we need to do that, okay? We need to do that. Because there's no carbon there. Okay? Solar energy jobs are growing nine times faster than the overall economy. That's a good thing, okay? Um, there are four and a half times as many jobs in solar as coal mining, and I'm not putting coal mining or anybody who works a hard job down. It's just that these people need to be retrained, okay, given something else to do, okay, uh, quickly, okay. Um, this is the Kentucky Coal Mining Museum, and guess what they have on their roof? Solar power. Why? Because it saves them $10,000 per year in energy costs, which I think is kind of ironic. Um, global cars on the, on the road, I do drive a Prius, my son and son-in-law each have plug-ins. Um, and the Paris Agreement, you've heard the Paris Agreement, every nation in the world uh, agreed to work together to achieve net zero greenhouse gases by 2050, meaning what? We're not going to do any more carbon than we've been doing, we're kind of leveling it off, okay? There's one country that says is not following this, you know who that country is? China. It's not us, it is China. not China. China. Some little country, but the thing is, a lot of people think it's us because what? The government has been telling us we're out of it. Legally, we cannot withdraw from the Paris Agreement until the day after the next presidential election, because we signed an agreement and we got to stay with it. Okay. And what's good is, even though the president is saying we're withdrawing from it, companies are saying we need to exceed our promise there. They realize that's what we. In India, China and India are on track to overachieve their Paris agreements, okay, which is a good thing. Who is still the, who's the biggest polluter right now? It used to be us. Who's the biggest polluter? China. 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 No, China. 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 China.
Because what are they using? Coal like crazy. And why do we have a hard time telling them they shouldn't do that? Because we get all of our products from there, everything comes from China. Even more than that. How did we get to where we were? Guess what we used? Coal. We used coal. But we didn't know at the time that was, a, that was so destructive to the environment. China should know better, but they have a lot of coal. It's, it's a tough argument. It's a really tough argument. The fourth national climate assessment came out from our government on November 23rd, 2018, and almost every uh, um, department of the government contributed to this. Okay, uh, they put it out on Friday, the day after Thanksgiving. Why did they pick that day to tell people about this? What do you do the day after Thanksgiving? Do you watch? Are you watching the news? Watching football games, right? Going shopping, right? So they released this so that America wouldn't see it, um, and pretty much said what um, Al Gore has been saying: Earth's climate is not changing faster than any point in modern civilization, and the changes are primarily due to human activities. Because most, some people who don't believe in climate change say this is just a natural pro progression of things. Okay, 97% of the science say no, 3% say yes. So I'm going to go with 97%. So I'm, I don't have time to go through all this, but that's pretty much what it says. The White House came out with this a couple days after that report came out. Quote, you have to look at the fact that this report is based on the most extreme modeled scenario, which contradicts long established standards, established trends. Modeling the climate is an extremely complicated science that is never exact. I agree with that statement wholeheartedly. Would you agree this is hard to model? Yes, right? of course. Then she goes on to say, we think this is the most extreme version, and it's not based on facts. It's not data-driven. We'd like to see something that is more data-driven. It's based on modeling. What's modeling based on? Data. So if you don't know that, you can believe this person. It's a way of snowing. Okay. Hopefully you know who this person is, Greta Thunberg. Yes. She was Times Person of the Year. She's now 16 years old from Sweden. She pretty much is going around and telling governments, you need to fix this. My generation is the one's going to pay for it. Your generation is going to pay for that. Not me. My kids, my grandchildren are not. They're going to be the ones that have to clean this up. And she's gone to summits and basically told them, you need to fix this. Okay. Um, let me see which part. Oh, our biosphere is being sacrificed so that rich people in countries like mine can live in luxury. It is the sufferings of the many which pay for the luxuries of the few. She also goes on to say, the year 2078, I will celebrate my 75th birthday. If I have children, maybe they will spend that day with me. Maybe they'll ask me about you. Maybe they'll ask, why didn't you do anything while well, there was still time to act? Okay. So I admire uh, Greta, what she's been saying. She uh, came to talk to Congress, and what I liked about what she said there was, I don't want you to listen to me, I want you to listen to who? The scientists, because that's their job. Okay. She's just telling them to please listen. When she came over, she did not fly over. She took a boat that used no carbon. And it took her, what, 15 days to cross the Atlantic, okay? Uh, but she was making a point, do not use carbon. She had to meet President, former President Obama. Uh, and so here are opposing views on climate. And you maybe have heard the Green New Deal that's been around for about a year or two, okay? So on one side, it says we talk about costs. We're going to pay for this whether we pass a Green New Deal, Green New Deal or not. Because as towns and cities go underwater, as wildfires ravage our communities, we're going to pay. And we're either going to decide if we're going to pay to react or if we're going to pay to be proactive. Meaning, do we keep letting things happen and then fix them, or do we try to be proactive and not have them even occur? You can probably guess who said this. Are you familiar with AOC, the representative at, from New York? To, to counter that, this is a um, senator from Utah. According to him, rather than worry about plastic straws and carbon emissions, Americans should just go out and find themselves a mate. And he says, quote, the solution to climate change is not this unserious resolution, but the serious business of human flourishing. The solution to so many of our problems at all times and in all places, fall in love, get married, and have some kids. <laughs> this is the senator from Utah. And if I hadn't heard him say it and read it at the same time, I would not believe that anybody would have said that. I don't understand it at all. If you do, let me know. David Gilmore, I'm not sure you know about Pink Floyd, but he feels so strongly about it, he sold all his guitars and made $20 million and gave it to climate change to help worry about that. Uh, the U.S. military is planning on climate change regardless of what the, high, the White House says. Uh, they realize that's going to be some problems. Okay? 
Uh, this, I'll just skip this. I don't have enough time to do that. But 42 degrees Celsius turns out to be like 107 degrees or something like that. But we don't have time for that, sorry. Um, I thought this was kind of funny. Uh, they overturned this bus and made it into a swimming pool in France. Okay, And they did something similar in Germany, where they just had a pool on tour there. Uh, Jane Fonda has been protesting every week in uh, Washington, D.C., getting arrested every week. Just call attention to it. And um, anybody know who Jeff Bezos is? Yes, he just pledged just recently, February 17th, $10 billion to combat climate change. Can you imagine $10 billion? I'm having a hard time with like a thousand, you know? Yeah. Trading a thousand dollars, let alone a million or a billion. Ten billion is going to give that out, okay? Um, and even with that, the next day's, the next day's um, headline was, it probably isn't enough. Even with $10 billion, it probably isn't enough. But at least you try, okay? So, um, since I attended that summit, this is what I've been doing. I'm talking to a lot of teachers nationally. I speak at conferences. I go to high schools. This is the third high school I've been to, so thank you for inviting me. Thank you for having me, and I appreciate that you were on task with me, okay? You seemed interested. You either faked very well or you really were interested, either way. Um, so, um, any, do you have any questions before I stop? Anything you'd like to know? Any? No? So, did you learn anything about mathematics? Did you learn anything about technology? Did you learn anything about climate change if you didn't know before? What I'd like you to do is talk about this with people. And there will be people who disagree with you, or maybe you disagree with me, but you need to talk about it. People need to be aware of this. Okay? Whenever I do this, people say, I didn't realize it was as bad as it is. Okay? And it's going to be on you, not on me, Okay? because I'm... I'm not here for very long, and I do want to show you why I'm concerned about it. Is this is um, my family, and I have three children and their spouses and six grandchildren, and I'm very concerned for them. And so, I'd like to get that fixed as soon as possible. So, thank you again. Leave, leave the calculators; those are not freebies, and we'll get these too. I do want those, but the other pages you can keep, and hopefully, Mr. Uh, Cornfield will work on that. So, thank you. Thank you very much.